you imagine if you had plants that look like this? Plants that promise to bloom longer, to be low maintenance, to take less water? Plants you don't even have to deadhead? Hi, I'm Shirley Bafsha of Garden World Report, and I'm in Bonzo, California at Euro American Propagators, a partner of Proven Winter Plants. I'm here to take you on an exclusive behind the scenes tour of the facilities here so that we can learn how plants are bred, how they're developed, and eventually how they make their way to your garden center. Proven Winners has the plant breeding process down to perfection. They like to take a plant and improve upon it. Here's an example of what plant breeding can do. I love Cleomis. Proven Winners has bred Senorita Rosalita. And what makes it great is that it's a Cleomis that doesn't have any thorns. So you can enjoy the beautiful blooms, it has extended bloom time, and you won't get hurt. Here's another example, follow me. Meet Snow Princess, a much improved alyssum by Proven Winners. Well, why is it better? First of all, have you ever seen a more prolific blooming alyssum? Snow Princess does not recede and end up in your neighbor's yard, and it's using that energy to create blooms. And it stays beautiful and in bloom most of the season. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. I'm ready to start the tour, and we're gonna find out how super plants like this are bred. We're standing in front of a very mysterious black wall, the research and development area, and I'm with Chris Berg, Director of Marketing for Euro-American Propagators. Chris, why are we here and not in there? We have breeders all over the world that are sending us these genetics, and they're trusting us to protect them and, and keep it proprietary until it gets introduced to the market. And so that's why this area is definitely sealed off from photography and, and visitors. This is where all the weird little gadgets and gizmos are being made of the new plants that are going to be introduced years from now. They're going to outperform anything that we see in garden centers today. Where do they come from? We have plants come in from six different continents. You name it. Really? And we'll take a look at about 4,000 plants every year. And about 20 of them will actually make the cut because we don't want to introduce something that's not going to be the absolute best okay. of anything that's out there. So we look at what are the varieties that are currently there and how can we improve them? Can we make more flowers? Can we make bigger flowers, disease resistance, really neat patterns? I see, so you're really improving on those positive features that we like? Absolutely. And you're eliminating those features that we don't like? Since I'm into showing you something, can you take me somewhere where you can show me the plants that have been selected yeah, we'll take a look through. We're going to go through the entire process of how we propagate those new plants. All right, and they can come with us, my they can friends. Come with us, yes. All right, guys. You're more than welcome. Okay, come on, friends. All right, I'll take let's it to the go. Next place. Chris, that research and development area is fascinating, especially since it's such a mystery to me. I didn't get to go in there, it's all secrets. It's the big secret area, yeah. This is the stock house where all the mother plants begin. So this is where we take the baby cuttings for all the brand new proven winners. So the mother plants, those are the plants that actually made the grade? They made the cut. Okay, yep. I'm ready to go. We'll wait. We can't just go in. get dressed first. Everything in here has got to stay very clean, very sterile. So we're gonna have to suit up, clean up, and then we'll go in. I think he just said I was dirty. Yep. <laughs> Couldn't you use black? Do you know why we use white? No. You can see bugs on white. Oh, you can see dirt true. on white. I'm already starting to feel like Mr. Clean. La. Okay, what's my name? Oh, do I have to take off my hat? You have to take off your hat. Will you yep. love me with my hat hair? Say yes. You can have a hair in on. Ah. Now you're ready right. to find a date. <laughs> With a bug. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. Are you ready? Not quite yet. So we're going to wash our hands, make sure we're all clean here. And then we're going to have to dip our feet in the alcohol bath to make sure that we don't track anything in from outside. You're tough. I know, I know. Clean, clean, clean. Now we'll dip our feet right here. Oh. I'm ready, baby. Are we ready to go in? We are ready to go in. Okay. So 
we're in the stock house and I actually feel a lot better now that I see other women dressed like me. Are there any precautions in this building itself to keep the area sanitary? A lot of precautions. All the plants are watered with drip tubes. Why? The reason we do that is if you were overhead watering with a hose, sure. you're going to splash water from this leaf to that leaf. And if there happen to be bacteria on one of these plants, it could easily be spread to another one. So why are the uh, women who are doing the cuttings wearing aprons? Because when they're leaning over the bench, uh -huh. they could be touching the plants. And so a virus or bacteria or insect could get attached to that. So when they move on to another crop, they'll take that apron off, dispose of it, and that way they're not transferring something from this bench to that bench if there would happen to be a disease in here. Okay. So walk me through the cutting process. What goes on? Well, what they do is they actually will go through, and depending on the crop, they have a certain standard of okay. different crops require a different length cutting, a different amount of what we call nodes, okay. um, where the leaves come out. So when we have a bag of cuttings like this, they'll package a hundred of them at a time to be stuck in the trays. You can see here, very uniform in the cutting size. Oh yes, yeah. right. And so those will root together at the same time, and that's very, very important for us from a commercial greenhouse standpoint. They're cut, they're put in a plastic bag, and then what do you do with them? These are gonna go in a styrofoam cooler. Oftentimes, uh, they'll go immediately into a refrigerated space to remove what we call field heat. And so the heat that's in that plant, the moisture in that plant, we need to remove that because that, that's what's gonna degrade the cutting too quickly. How long does it take before this goes into the next step? These will probably be planted in the morning. Oh, so it's pretty fast. Right, right. Wonderful, I like that. Okay, so Chris, you brought me to the sticking line, the planting line? The planting line, yes. Take me through the process. What starts? This is where we're going to take these cuttings that we harvested from the other greenhouse, uh -huh. and we're going to actually plant them, get them ready to go into the propagation house where it's going to be very humid, very warm, and they're going to start sending out roots. Okay, so how do I get a hold of these trays? Does everybody just pick one up? These trays actually start at the end of this conveyor line. They're automatically filled with soil, and then there's what's called a dibbler, and the dibbler's putting these holes automatically in the soil for you after it's moistened. Wow. So it's very easy. You just get stick them right in the center. You mean even I can do it? Even you can do it. I think I want to try. Okay, right. can you show me how to be an official proven winner's planter? Planter, sure. What do I need? What's well, first you took your cuttings out of the cooler. Okay. Feel nice and chilled there. Remember yeah, that is cold. That is cold. Now, heat. what's this for? These are for, this particular cutting needs a rooting hormone. Okay. And we don't want you dipping your Protect. skin right into it. chemicals, okay. so. See this, guys? I feel like, like a doctor. <laughs> All right, well, actually, I'm not doing too well. I'm anxious to get dirty. So, hold that open for you. Okay, We're right. just gonna gently dip the end right in the hormone. Yeah, my first beauty, see that? Okay, just a little bit. And All then, right. oh, it's already got the hole, like you said. All there. I like that. Now, if I were a really experienced planter who works here, mm -hmm. how many of these trays could I finish in an hour? Well, a beginner, we're going to expect about eight trays per hour. A good, okay. a good person on the line is going to hit about 10. Okay. But if you do 15, you're really good and you're going to be moving up. Well, I want to be promoted. <laughs> okay, hold on. Let's see. Are you going to... Is there any quality control to this? Make sure they're not flopping over here. We oh. need to make sure that they're firm in there. Oh, yeah. Proven winners. So let's assume my tray is full. What happens next? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this barcode. Okay. This is going to tell us all about this tray through its life at the nursery. It tells us what week we are that you're sticking. Mm -hmm. It's going to tell us when it's expected to finish. And it's going to be able to help us track it as it goes through the nursery in different areas. That's so great. we're going to take this uh -huh. and we're just going to put it right there. Mm -hmm. Now, what happens when this is completely done and filled? Once you're done with this, it's going to go on the conveyor belt. Okay. It's going to get one more water. It's going to get a shower over it. Okay. It's going to go on a table and be sent out to the propagation house, which we're going to go see next. And what's going to happen there? It's going to be hot. Get oh, ready. not again! <laughs> These plants, it's a tough life. <laughs> So Chris, now that all of the cuttings are in the trays and they're full, you yeah. brought me into the mist house and it's really hot in here. It's very What's hot going in on in here? The whole purpose of this house is to get that cutting now to start doing roots. We can't just put it outside, it would wilt and die. So this house is designed specifically to get that root growth moving. Okay, so what does the humidity have to do with it? Well, humidity wise, that plant, a cutting like this, it doesn't have roots at all. So it wow. can't take water up. 
True. So what we need to do is keep the humidity as high as possible in here, and that's going to keep it from what we call transpiring, releasing water out of the foliage. And so that's what's going to keep it alive long enough until it does shoot those roots okay, out. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. Now, is there an ideal temperature for rooting a plant? Anywhere 70 to 90 degrees. We want to keep it very warm, and most importantly, we want to keep the soil warm, because okay. that's what's going to activate these uh, cuttings to start producing roots. Mm -hmm. So the heating in this greenhouse is actually done under the bench. We've got right hot here? water pipes. Yeah, there's hot water pipes here that run under, and that's what keeps that soil medium very warm. That is amazing. So it's almost like a hot water bottle for the soil. Exactly. And how long, typically, does it take a plant uh, to grow roots? How long do they stay here? In this house, it's about seven to 10 days. And what that is, is it's just long enough for them to start getting roots so that they can start to live on their own. Okay. As a plant comes in here from the very beginning, we're gonna be misting it a lot because again, there's no root at all. So we need to make sure that foliage stays wet. Sure. But as you can see with these petunias that have been in a couple days longer, they've already developed some Ooh. roots. So what we wanna do here is cut that mist back. Okay. It's not gonna hit this plant nearly as often. Right. Because what we want now is the plant to force itself to root so right. it can bring its own energy in. Is this enough roots for uh, this plant to go the next step? This plant will have a few more days in here, and then what it's going to do is it's going to go into one of our main production greenhouses, which will continue to develop the roots as well as the top of the plant, so we've got that nice full liner ready to transplant. All right, what's next? All right, roll. That was good. It was good. So Chris, this is the next step in the production. This is it. All right. Doesn't now, it feel great in here? It does. Now, how come this uh, greenhouse feels a lot different than the other ones that were like climate controlled? What's different about this one? Well, this is our normal production greenhouse. Well, these plants have developed their roots already. They don't need that constant humidity. Right. You can see oh. that's a fully rooted out liner there. That's right. And so this one is pretty much ready to go to market, but there's one more step that we do before we actually ship this out. And what's that? It's going to spend a week outside. On that note, let's go outside. I've been inside greenhouses enough, and I'll tell you, we've been in a lot of greenhouses. We have been. It's a lot of steps to propagating these plants, but I think outdoors is where I want to be because that's where plants really belong. Sunshine. All right, Shirley, here we are, the final stage in the nursery process. We made it! We're at the end here, yes. So we're outside, there's no greenhouse anymore, ah. under the stars. Now, do you think the plants are enjoying the sun as much as we are? The plants love it. Okay, what's the purpose of being out here? The purpose out here is not as much the sun uh -huh. as it is the cool night temperatures. What that's going to do is it makes for this really hard foliage. It really tones the plant. This actually is ready to ship. It looks. This is ready to ship. What we'll do is we will take this up to our grading facility. Mm -hmm. So why don't we go up there and take a look at what we do? All right, great. Plants right. just came out of the greenhouse. Okay. Now what's gonna happen to these plants? They look perfect. Are they in perfect condition? They're not quite perfect yet. So these ladies are gonna go through and they're gonna make sure that every plant meets our standards. So they're gonna go through and they're gonna find any of the bad plants that might not make the cut. They're gonna pull that out and they're gonna use a spare tray here where they're gonna plug it in with a much healthier, fresh plant before it goes out to shipping. Next, these plants will go through one more water bath. Okay, and that's for what? That's because they're gonna be shipping out. So they could sit on a truck for two, three days. So we wanna make sure that they've got enough water to make it through. Right. So they go through a water bath, they get soaked, and then they're gonna go through and they're gonna scan the barcodes on here to make sure that they fill every customer's order completely. Yeah. That sounds like the perfect ending, a nice little cleansing bath exactly. before going off to your final destination. I'm actually gonna take you and introduce you to Sienna and she's gonna show you how they pack them up, put them on the truck and send them to their next home. All Let's right. Go. So we're in the shipping department now. Yep. How do you take a plug tray like that mm -hmm and make sure that it arrives safely to your growers. Well, it's mostly about the box. We do a lot of different things to ensure that the plants are safe in the box for their journey. So we have different boxes for different seasons, keep them warm in the winter and keep them cool in the summer. How do you do that? 
Well, we add different ventilation systems in the summer, so the boxes will have a whole configuration so oh. that air can pass through the liners to keep the plant healthy and right. cool. In the winter, we have a thicker cardboard box that insulates them and keeps the heat in. Uh, the truck will load everything up right here on the dock, and then away it goes to the grower. Now, what's interesting about this whole process mm -hmm. is since Euro-American propagators uh, grows these plants, they don't send them directly to our garden centers. They send them to growers, right? Right. The nurseries are going to take these plugs and they're going to put them in their next size container where they'll fill out and look beautiful for the garden center. Wow, can you imagine all of these steps, guys? I mean, you've seen the process they've been through here and then it's a whole other process once they even get to the grower. So it is, it's a lot of energy and a lot of care that goes into those plants. So this is not like growing plants at your house. <laughs> this is not. That's the easy part. That's the easy part. <laughs> This is growing on an Olympic level. <laughs> great gardens begin with great plants. Plants that promise to bloom longer, to be low maintenance, to take less water. I learned a lot today about the fascinating world of plant breeding. There's so much time devoted to these plants, money, research, and talent. And as a gardener, I have a newfound appreciation for plants that are specially bred. And I hope that you do too.